Coming up on the Rockbridge Report. Things are turning sour for one nearby college that may soon close. Find out what a county attorney and a forensic accountant have to say about the decision. A trip to the zoo may not be in the books for Rockbridge area residents this spring. The Natural Bridge Zoo remains closed with its license suspended following allegations of animal abuse. We'll tell you how the zoo's owner is responding. What used to be a local school could be the site of a new solar array for sustainable energy. But not all residents are excited to welcome the large panels into the neighborhood. And later, what local attractions are bringing visitors from across the state as tourism season kicks off? That and more is next on the Rockbridge Report. Live from the campus of Washington and Lee University with news for Rockbridge County, this is the Rockbridge Report. Good afternoon and welcome to the final Rockbridge Report of the spring. I'm Alexandra Seymour. And I'm Asher Lubin. Students, faculty, and alumni are working to stop Sweetbriar College from closing. The Saving Sweetbriar organization hired a forensic accountant to investigate the school's financial condition. He said the current condition does not warrant closure. In addition, the county of Amherst is suing the college, its president, and board of directors for soliciting charitable contributions, all the while planning to close the school. We have a copy of the lawsuit and other information on our website, rockbridgereport.washingtonandlee.net. The Natural Bridge Zoo was set to open for its 2015 season last weekend. C.C. Smith tells us what went wrong. The Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries suspended the Natural Bridge Zoo's permit to exhibit wild animals last week, citing recurring problems with the lack of veterinary care, sanitation, and animal enclosures. Zoo owner Carl Mogensen says all the problems have been resolved. Though the USDA uh, found some problems which have all been corrected, but the Virginia game cannot reissue our license until we've had a second inspection from the USDA. And right now we're waiting for the second inspection because all these citations have been corrected. As potential customers drove up to the zoo last weekend for the planned Easter egg hunt, they quickly realized they would not be let in. Mogensen, however, is not worried about the revenue. Animals are doing well. They're wonderful. They're getting the same care 365 days a year. Whether we're open or not, the animals are always taken care of. Mogensen expects to open soon. Matthew Gray of the Humane Society wants a different outcome. We don't know how long this state's permit suspension is going to last, but we have encouraged both state and federal authorities to permanently revoke the licenses um, from Natural Bridge Zoo. The license was revoked after the USDA's second investigation into the zoo still showed multiple recurring violations. The 2015 opening season was originally set for April 4th. The zoo administrators now hope to open up during April after a further investigation is done. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm CeCe Smith. Mogensen's lawyers asked the Rockbridge Circuit Court last Friday to reverse the state suspension, but the court denied. Jurors in the Boston Marathon bombing trial have found Jokar Tsarnaev guilty on all 30 counts. But the case isn't closed. CNN's Chris Welch reports. It's not a day to celebrate. I guess you could call it a bittersweet victory. I'm not out there uh, cheering for what happened, but I'm satisfied. Bittersweet, but not over. With a guilty verdict on all 30 counts, the question now becomes, will Jahar Sarnaev face death? The start date on the penalty phase has not been set, but the same jury will deliberate Sarnaev's sentence, life in prison without parole or death. The jury must vote unanimously for a death sentence. It's been nearly two years since a terrorist attack rocked the finish line of the iconic Boston Marathon and shook this city to the core. Survivors of the bombing, like Karen Brassard, say they were relieved by Wednesday's verdict. I'm grateful to have him off the street. No matter what happens next, survivors say they'll focus on their lives while a jury deliberates death. I may be standing on one fake leg, but I'm standing here stronger than ever because someone tried to destroy me and he failed. In Boston, I'm Chris Welch. Fresh clashes between government loyalists and Houthi rebels were reported Wednesday in Aden, Yemen, the government's last major stronghold. Here you can see the first shipment of emergency aid from Doctors Without Borders arriving in Aden. 
The World Health Organization says the fighting has killed more than 540 people in just the last few weeks alone. 1,700 more have been injured. Over the next few days, the Red Cross will also try to send two aid planes into Yemen to help with the country's rapidly deteriorating humani humanitarian situation. A late night traffic stop turned into a drug bust in the early morning of April 2nd on Central Road in Lexington. Rockbridge County K-9 Deputy Troy Weimer says he and his K-9 partner Blix found a mobile meth lab in the back of the sedan he had just pulled over for having tinted windows. Ashley Shendock, Jeremy Miller, Joseph Carl Bryant, and Kristen Knuckles were all taken into custody. Only the driver, Knuckles, was not charged with manufacturing methamphetamine. The Sheriff's Department is also filing an additional drug charge because the arrest occurred within 1,000 feet of a school. When we come back, plans for a new solar array are ruffling feathers among county residents. We'll walk you through the impact it could have on energy costs. After that, how local church officials are responding to a recent decision to recognize same-sex marriage within the Presbyterian Church. fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Bye, Only you can prevent wildfires. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Welcome back. Depending on where you live, your electric bill could go down by the end of this year. Rockbridge County officials are reviewing a proposal to install shared solar panels for the community. But as Leslie Yavak learned, some neighbors say the price of energy savings may be too high. Reducing the cost of electricity for local residents is the focus of Bark Electrical Cooperative's plan to install a solar panel array at what used to be Highland Bell School. But local sports teams currently use the fields at the school where the panels would be located and will need to find a new practice field next year. Local property owner Buddy Powers said the land is crucial. It's, it's like the field around here for people to use as a community. He said locals rely on this field. On the weekends, there's like children's leagues, there's a little, little kid's soccer league, um, the Lex Lax, there's these little, you know, five-year-old kids playing lacrosse out there. But CEO and general manager of Bark, Mike Kaiser, said the solar panels would benefit the environment by producing about 800,000 kilowatt hours of energy per year. And that's 800,000 kilowatt hours of energy we don't have to buy from <laughs> fossil fuel plants. Customers would be able to subscribe to the community shared panels at a fixed rate. The panels could offer up to 25% of a single household's electricity. 
but as electricity prices increase over time, subscribers would still only need to pay the fixed rate. Governor McAuliffe gave Bark a $500,000 grant on Monday to support the project. But Rockbridge County has not yet given its final approval. Kaiser said he hopes the grant will encourage the county to approve Bark's project. I think it shows with the governor and the secretary here that you know the, the, the powers of the state are really interested in this project too. But Director of Community Development for Rockbridge County, Sam Crickenberger, said some people are worried about introducing a new system to the area. Well, we've subsidized energy explorations for hundreds of years, but now that we're subsidizing green energy, that's a concern to some people. Powers operates the Big Spring Farm wedding venue located right next to Highland Bell. He said the solar array could taint the property and turn away customers. Potentially we'll have a three acre uh, field of essentially mirrors, you know, um, that kind of will scar that view. But Kaiser said Highland Bell is the ideal location. It has a large field in the front front of the school that can, that can produce energy all day. The, su the sun just tracks perfectly across the sky. The solar panels would only be available to the roughly 10,000 BARC members who reside in their service territory. But BARC only services parts of Rockbridge County, excluding Lexington, Natural Bridge, and Fairfield. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Leslie Yavak. The Rockbridge County Planning Commission will not review the proposal again until it meets next uh, on May 13th. But Kaiser said if the county approves Bark's proposal, construction could start in the fall and the panels would be up and running before the end of the year. Officials say the police officer who fatally shot an unarmed African American in South Carolina has been kicked off the force. Michael Slager is now charged with murder and the FBI is involved in the investigation. CNN's Kyung Law tells us more about the man who was shot and the loved ones he left behind. Walter Scott now lives in our minds for the way he died. For his family, the 50-year-old struggled in an imperfect world and his place in it. He came from a large extended family. He was one of three sons. I had two brothers. I had two brothers. But now I have one brother. But uh, out of my brothers, he was the most outgoing out of all of us. <clears throat> <clears throat> he, had, he knew everybody. That outgoing personality brought him to the U.S. Coast Guard at age 19. He served for two years until the Coast Guard says a drug-related offense led to an involuntary separation. Scott received a general discharge under honorable conditions when he left in 1986. His family says the years that followed brought ups and downs. Scott's first wife and the mother of his two older children died. Scott remarried, had two more children, but that marriage ended in divorce. Unpaid child support piled up, and according to South Carolina authorities, a warrant was issued for his arrest. That may be why, says the Scott family attorney, he ran from Officer Michael Slager. His brother says he was a huge Dallas Cowboys fan and was happy the last time the family was together. Scott's parents just celebrated their 50th anniversary where he danced with the family he loved. He was kind. He loved his children. He was a great father. He was a great father. He was a good friend and he was a good mother. And he was also a great son. As far as his court record, we looked at it. Everything we saw was traffic related or child custody related. You have to go back almost 30 years back to 1987 when he was 21 years old to find the only mark of violence that an assault and battery charge. Kyung Law, CNN, Los Angeles. Rockbridge County Schools are extending school days by almost a half hour through the end of the year. The board voted March 24th to start school seven minutes earlier and end 21 minutes later to help make up the 11 snow days taken this year. The calendar will end on June 5th, but parents and teachers are less than thrilled. They say they were not consulted and heard only after the board made its decision. Rockbridge County plans to build snow days into the calendar next year, as it did in previous years, so this will not happen again. The Presbyterian Church USA voted last year on a preliminary policy that would allow ministers to conduct same-sex marriage ceremonies in states where it is legal. But local congregations of the church get to make the ultimate decision for themselves. 
Megan Latella reports. The proposed measure calls for a change in the language of the Presbyterian Church USA's Constitution. The amendment will define marriage as being between two people as opposed to between a man and a woman. If the new policy passes, local congregations will get to decide for themselves whether they will conduct same-sex marriages within their walls. In the Rockbridge area, opinions appear to be mixed. There are some churches uh, in the Shenandoah Valley um, that are considering leaving the denomination over this and other um, decisions like it, uh, the same-sex marriage. I mean, I know there are areas in Rockbridge County that are more conservative and I guess there are going to be people who don't agree and think it's wrong. To take effect, the policy will have to be approved by a majority of the 172 presbyteries in the U.S. Presbyteries are defined as regional communities that consist of multiple churches in a given area. I understand people's objections to it, but that's not my personal. I, don't, I personally don't have any objections. I don't think they should be denied the right to share their life with someone they love. And if, if we're saying they can't get married, that's pretty much what we're saying. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Megan Latella. Last Wednesday, Brian Harrison was arrested for a home invasion that occurred in Lexington the previous weekend. Police announced yesterday that Harrison had also stolen a firearm from another location out in the county and had hid it underneath a building on Main Street. It is not known yet how many extra charges Harrison will face. When we come back, Good afternoon, Rockbridge County, and we've got a humid day out today, 66 degrees and overcast currently, and we will have some inclement weather bringing us into the weekend. Stay tuned for your five-day forecast here on the Rockbridge Report. And it may not be the 1800s, but it's sure starting to feel like it in downtown Lexington. Tourism season is kicking off, and we'll tell you what main attractions have visitors lining up for carriage rides. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your GED. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future and sign up for free classes now at yourged.org. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. No more books. No more teachers. Dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org, because great things happen when we live united. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Welcome back. The long-awaited high temperatures are here, and Stu Scott has your full forecast. What kind of weather can we expect this weekend, Stu? Thanks, Asher. And as I said before, it is muggy outside today. We've got a high of 70 degrees, a low of 57, and humidity currently sitting at 75%. That's going to make it feel hot and sticky outside, so keep that in mind before you leave your house. Let's move on to our current conditions here in Lexington. 
And again, as I said, hot and sticky outside right now. Current temperatures are 66 degrees and just a few clouds in the sky. And we will see those clouds begin to produce thunderstorms here in just a few hours. So either be inside your house or in your rain gear by 7.30 p.m. Let's move on to our regional map. Again, we have a similar trend throughout the region with weather. Uh, you can see that we've got our low in Charlottesville here at 55 degrees and our high in Lexington of 66. But again, the trend throughout the region seems to be cloudy and extremely humid. Let's move on to our five day forecast and see how the weekend plays out. Oops. As you can see, as you can see here, we're going to have thunderstorms beginning tomorrow. And by Saturday and Sunday, it will have cleared up, have some absolutely beautiful weather those two days. The sun will be in the sky and we'll have temperatures in the low 70s. By Monday and Tuesday, we will have rain as well as a spike in temperature and humidity. That's all for today. Thanks. And back to you, Asher. Thanks, Stu. Sounds like we're in for another warm week. But high temperatures aren't the only thing we'll be seeing because of this weather. Buena Vista's Glen Morey Park might just turn into your newest fishing spot. The city opened the river for trout fishing on Saturday after it stocked the river with rainbow, brook, and golden trout from the Bontex plant south to Glen Morey Park. Our Raymond Monasterski reports that local residents are already enjoying the park's newest amenity. You will need a state fishing license before you go fish at the park. Lexington's Visitor Center said tourist spending jumped 5% in 2013. Lexington Beat reporter Kinsey Grant found that the city has been on an upward trend since 2009. Tourists visiting Lexington can enjoy the horse-drawn carriage rides, explore Stonewall Jackson House, and tour two universities but they also contribute to the local economy. We had over $33 million in direct tourist spending. Along with that, we had over $2 million in combined state and local taxes. Williams said tourism in our area creates jobs, rakes in food and lodging taxes, and develops the economy overall. The average tourist party spends about $600 a day on food, lodging, transportation, attractions and shopping. Williams said one of the most popular attractions for visitors to the area is the Virginia Horse Center. Well, every weekend there is something the public is invited here to. Most of the time, almost all the time, it's free. The Horse Center also contributes to the economy of Rockbridge by bringing in competitors and equestrian teams. They stay in hotels, they buy gasoline here, they eat in the restaurants, they buy their supplies here while they're here, and they pay directly to the horse center uh, for the services we provide as an athletic competition facility. Tourists are drawn to Lexington as a destination for its small town feel and multiple attractions. It's really, it's really cool, it's historic, the weather's nice, it's pretty and interesting, and it's very different from where I live, so it's, very, it's much more small town than where I live. Williams said other visitors include baby boomers for the history and young adults for the music and breweries. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Kinsey Grant. Williams said tourism reaches its peak season when students at the local universities are gone for the summer. This allows Lexington to maintain a strong economy year-round. After the break, find out which schools are bringing the heat on the field. We'll have the latest for you on local sports and national sports. Tommy can't sing and Tommy can't dance. So we're going to put some ants in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they've got ants in their pants. They've got ants in their pants. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, 
and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket again. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. And roll. Every budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me treats. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit getcoveredamerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Welcome back. The final four may be over, but spring sports are still in full swing. Emery Cox has our full update. How are our local teams doing, Emery? Will Asher, Washington and Lee baseball topped. Uh, Eastern Mennonite yesterday with a 2-1 to one victory. G the Generals took Captain Dean Smith Field after a three-and-a-half hour rain delay. Senior pitcher Corey Smith tied the WNL record for career saves with his third this season and ninth in his career. The Generals look to record another win as they host Lynchburg today. WNL Men's Rugby Club will travel to Pittsburgh April 19th to take on Northern Colorado in the NSCRO Final Four. The Minks look to top Northern Colorado and move in the, to the championship match April 19th. WNL Men's Lacrosse fell 4 to 6 to Roanoke Wednesday. The Generals scored a season low four goals facing off against the Maroons. WNL hopes to improve their 8 and 6 record this season when they host Randolph on April 18th. Washington and Lee women's lacrosse had better luck than the men this week. They stomped Sweetbriar 26-6 Tuesday. The women look to continue their four-game winning streak April 18th <coughs> when they host Randolph. VMI lacrosse will shoot for its first conference victory this season as they travel to Furman Saturday. The cadets hope to end their 11th game losing streak with this weekend's face-off. Cadets baseball fell 6-2 to Radford Tuesday. They look to improve their 9-17 record as they host Eastern Tennessee State Bucks for a three-game series this weekend. The action starts at 6 Friday night. VMI's water, women's water polo team will hit the pool this weekend after two weeks off. The Lady Cadets travel to New York for a four-game weekend. They'll face Wagner and Iona on Saturday and St. Francis and Siena on Sunday. SVU men's baseball will continue its game against Christopher Newport tonight at home. The Knights were up 4-0 at the bottom of the fourth when weather postponed the game. The Knights men's tennis team is swinging for its first victory of the year as it takes on Lynchburg at home today. Moving into high school action, Rockbridge County high school teams look to improve their record as the year draws to a close. Both the boys and girls lacrosse team will face William Byrd High School next Wednesday. Both our CHS soccer teams will play Broadway tomorrow. The girls will host to go the Gobblers and the boys will travel to meet them. And that's a wrap for your local sports. Now over to you, Alexandra. Thanks, Emery. This week in national sports, the NFL has hired its first full-time female official. The NFL announced on Wednesday that come this season, Sarah Thomas will be overseeing games. There were reports last week of the hiring, but the league made it official yesterday. Thomas started working for Conference USA in 2007 and be became the first woman to officiate a bowl game in 2009. She has also been doing some sideline work for the Browns, Saints, and Colts. After 25 years, journalism professor Brian Richardson is retiring at the end of the school year. Frank Diaz shares the thoughts of people who interacted with him on a daily basis. Cheers, BR. The iconic phrase is how Professor Brian Richardson signed almost every email. But when he retires at the end of the school year, his signature phrase won't be the only thing that's missed. A graduate of Washington and Lee class of 1973, Richardson received his BA in journalism. He started as a TV reporter and moved to newspapers including the Tallahassee Democrat and the Miami Herald. Eventually, he earned a master's degree and PhD and returned to WNL where he spent the last quarter century teaching generations of journalists, including all of us. New and old colleagues, as well as students alike, all recall the impact Richardson has left on them, as well as his journalistic integrity and involvement in the department. 
I seriously contemplated leaving uh, because it didn't seem like, you know, this was going to work out for me. But one of the reasons I stayed was actually partly because of him. Um, you know, he was always, always compassionate in his dealings with me. He was always, you know, sensitive and caring. And that kind of... It didn't make up for the fact my, that my husband was somewhere else, but at least it made me feel like um, I was among people that cared. There are some faculty members, not in journalism anymore, but some who were vindictive. And Brian's not that way. He's, uh, he was a student here. He knew what it was like to be a student here. And he uh, consequently, uh, by doing what uh, what he does, he he is he is a student's teacher. I think that uh, Professor Richardson has been such a fixture for so long that even if he is gone physically, I think he will continue to reside uh, mentally and spiritually in a way that. Uh, helps our department continue to do the kind of work that he has always dreamed to do, which is uh, first rate and excellent. His legacy is not just with his uh, colleagues, his professor colleagues, I mean, it's also with his students. And he, he is a fierce supporter of the free press, not just for, you know, grown-ups who are working for news organizations, but also for students. And there have been many occasions when he has really supported student journalists at Washington and Lee when it wasn't necessarily an easy thing to do. I've always gone to him with any sort of problem I'm having, any sort of question I have. And I think um, just recently when he really went to bat for the students here with the judge in town who wouldn't release um, the statement for Nick Hansel's plea bargain. I think that just shows how much Professor Richardson believes in what he teaches and believes in his students and what they deserve and the rights they have. We are taught my Journalism 101 class, so he was one of the very first journalism professors that I had here. And I really just sort of fell in love with journalism after taking that class. And I think what impressed me about him the most was that sort of from the very beginning, he took us really seriously as journalism students. And I think that's probably the most valuable thing that you can give someone that wants to go into a career that's so criticism based is really believing in them and letting them know sort of from the beginning as an 18 year old freshman that you are a journalist from sort of that until when you graduate. And I think that instilled in me a lot of positive, you know, sort of hope in myself and what I could do in my career. I would say one of my favorite things about VR is that at the beginning of every single class he would say phasers on stun and none of us really knew how to respond at first and then it kind of just became a ritual which is so telling of him that he makes everything into a funny little repetitive ritual kind of thing. He's definitely like one of the traditional um, older generation of news people where they have those older standards and I know that journalism is kind of moving into a new direction with focus on online and social media and that kind of leaves um, for more traps to kind of fall short of upholding kind of the highest standard standards and facts, writing and everything like that. And I think that um, what he has left in this department and with his students is that like those standards still apply today and we need to make sure that um, those values are continued to follow through the department. In the end, it's sad to see a beloved professor go, but we can all learn to appreciate what he's taught and how he holds a special place in our lives. So from all of us, cheers, BR. Have a wonderful retirement. For The Rockridge Report, I'm Frank Diaz. Thanks for tuning in to our final spring edition of The Rockridge Report. Stay updated with us this summer at rockridgereport.washingtonandlee.net. Cheers, Cheers, Lexington, Lexington Buena, Buena Vista, Vista, and Rockbridge County. <laughs> okay, so there's this old joke about the guy who's retiring, and they say, well, what are you going to do after you retire? He said, well, for the first two weeks, I'm going to sit on my porch in a rocking chair. And then after that, I might start rocking very slowly. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought it was funny. Sorry. Uh, but I'm going to fish. I'm going to do some more writing, travel. Um, 
looking at the internet, apparently every person, there must be a federal law that every person who retires has to start a blog, so I'll probably, you know, wind up doing that just so I'm not in violation of the law. <laughs> Thanks everybody. It's been a ride. It's been a great ride and I appreciate it.